Hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm this here strategy gamer. And joined today by the antagonist's voice, who is not serious and has got no strategy whatsoever. <laughs> so welcome guys, uh, we're going to start a new series today. We're going to be playing Suzerain, and as you heard, uh, this is going to be a new format. So it's going to be the two of us uh, speaking today. And just before we start, Suzerain is uh, sort of a political simulator game um, set in the Cold War and sort of fantasy world but very, very interesting. And I'm actually in love with game, and I do love, uh, do hope that you'll love it too. Um, so it's going to be great, and it's going to be a lot of fun, uh, I hope. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Well, the thing about getting into it is there's a lot of prologue, and that's a little bit um, a hard thing to, to go through, I think, uh, because this is going to be like 15 questions or so. Um, before we get into the actual game, but it will be worth it. So we'll be trying to to be a little bit fast here, but let's see. So that's it's more of an audiobook, really. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it has a lot of text. It is a wall of text, uh, but it's actually brilliant text. So uh, we'll try to, to have you be able to read that text, uh, but I don't think we we'll read all of it out loud. So Nevertheless. the setting is 1908. We are in Sortland. So we are opening our eyes to this world and have to decide what, uh, where we came from and what our history is. Well, the important thing is right now we're in the kingdom of Sortland and that will be relevant later on. So I'm thinking middle, middle income family, sort of uh, middle ground here. Whole sort. Yeah, I can't pronounce the other name, so let's take oh, whole sort. Whole sort. Yeah, these names are going to come up. I think Lachaven or Lachaven. I, I, I don't know. So we'll let's see. take whole sort. Whole sort is fine. I think that's the capital, actually. So we are Anton, an only child of a diligent civil servant with an ordinary childhood. Good <laughs> enough life, lucky enough to attend a well-known public school, so that nothing out of the ordinary, it seems. Frequent fights, though, at the Rain family home. These make you feel uneasy. I, I, I do like how it's just like... You pick, you Average. pick, you, you pick middle, middle income. You're just gonna be completely ordinary, nothing interesting. And the years <laughs> pass. are passing. It's literally <laughs> nothing. So 1923 now. Okay, during a history class at school, the bell started to ring unexpectedly. You heard a loud commotion outside. As everyone tried to figure out what was going on, the principal announced the historical revolution. The kingdom was no more. The Republic of Sortland was born. You did not fully understand. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't quite understand, uh, but things are progressing here. So how old are we again? Uh, at this point, I think fifteen. Okay, so are we, well, yes, we were born in nineteen oh eight. We were born in nineteen oh eight, as I understand, and it's now uh, we are fifteen. Things are changing. Okay. Kingdom yeah, is gone. And we are not really sure what's happening. So three years later. After graduating, you passed the university exam with high marks. You had the opportunity to choose between several, several studies you chose. I want to go economics because A, I'm an economist and B, I, I know for a fact that I think it's going to be useful. Probably all of these are going to be useful, but we are going to start out needing economic skills. Okay, Lachaven. Lachaven, Lachaven. We will need to settle on one thing. So, first year we attended a lecture with David Whiskey. He was a well-known diplomat from the Foreign Ministry and the son of the President, actually. Casually. Wow. <laughs> yes, just around the corner. Actually. After observing the hall in silence, he explained why a market economy is the better option for Sortland. He argued for a system where prices for goods and services are determined by the open market. Right. And here's, here's how this, this game is set up, right? You, you can play in multiple different ways. You can play a socialist, you can play a fascist, you can play an oligarch. I think what I would like to go here is with a sort of Western reformer style. So um, going very much open market, um, liberal rights, uh, that's that sort of thing, democracy based. Um, so I think we would agree in principle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think just passing our exams is not like us. <laughs> we are interested in no, what's no, happening. We, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So again, one year later, 1927, soldiers entered the campus in the evening ahead of the first election. Many were in shock as the uniformed men created a security cordon and started arresting the teachers. A group of students started gathering in protest. Along with your best friend, Petr Vektern, you decide to... So, the coup of 1927. We, at this point, 19 years old. 
And I'm quite honest, I don't know what I would have picked in that situation. Quite honestly, I think, of course, protesting the coup, it's a military coup, it's the right thing to do. But it's like a I... heroic thing to do, but it's, yeah. it's the actual question. You lived like a pretty ordinary life in the middle of nowhere, Sortland, with your parents from also Hilal. I and think it's he's... a capital. Is it? Yeah, it's well, the bustling heart of Sortland. Middle of nowhere, <laughs> shit whole capital of Sortland. And then <laughs> you start studying. So would you actually start protesting? I mean, let's, let's, okay, let's, you know, if you're a Western reformist, we should probably, you know, have this as a form formative moment where we are, where we actually uh, getting involved in politics. This might be our moment, right? Where we, where we are seeing that everything is, is, is starting to go somewhere and we need to salvage it. Yeah, okay, let's go for that. Okay, let's protest. By the way, that guy, Peter Beckton, he's going to be relevant later on. I know that from my test game. Yes. I've played about a, ca a chapter, but not much more than that. Right, one of the officers made a loud announcement that echoed through the campus. General Luderine declared martial law in order to restore the administration. Please stand back and disperse to your rooms. He joined the students that slowly marched towards the large group of soldiers. Suddenly, the soldiers charged. Oh, it's delightful, isn't it? The student fell and was trampled as everybody started running away. Well... I mean... I mean, it's heroic to try to hold your ground, but does it make sense to... No, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm with you. You know, we, we, went, we went halfway, but maybe, you know, with everyone running off, I think we are running off too. I mean, there's no option of saying, like, I want to help that guy. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't. No, nope, we don't. Anyway, we are lucky to escape. It was nevertheless a gloomy year. So, coup of 1927, a relevant year so in the now history. So, in October of that year, the majority of the students and teachers displayed their opposition. Thus, Lehrerin became a target for the military regime. You didn't want to stay idle and decided to join. I like the debate group. I, I just like the debate group. Because, yes, I've been debating in, at uni when I was there. I mean, the others are nice, but... Let's go for it. The dozens of debates helped you hone your oratory skills while also helping you grow your network. So you all grew in these groups. One of the meetings, Petr introduced you to one of his friends, Monica, who was a volunteer for the Swedish League of Women. You were immediately attracted to her... body? Oh, not an option. Well, beauty, I, th I think that translates that to body. With... I want to say intelligence. Because you don't want to be the blunt guy. No, I don't want to be. I, I feel like I'm being punished if I'm being the blunt guy here. <laughs> or diligence. I we mean, you just diligence you, you as well. literally just met her. What do you know about her diligence? Fair point. <laughs> let's say intelligence. She <laughs> let's, can, let's she can be that. quite intelligent right away, right? So, political environment is charged and we are... Yeah, so again, I think I want to, do not want to be part of the socialist. I definitely don't want to be part of the nationalists. So I think between these two, we are staying away from any specific political organization. Just because none really, well, no, we, work for we, us? Or... Yeah. yeah, we are, we are moderate. We are, you know, we are interested in democracy. We are not interested in, in nationalism nor really in communism. Yeah. So for this playthrough, I think... We're going straight for the middle. Straight for the middle, which in this case is just nothing. So, the next summer, 1928, the radio relayed that the communist general Rickard surrounded Lutheran and his troops demanding their surrender. They refused and heavy fighting broke out across the country. You just couldn't believe it. The army was fighting amongst themselves. Sortland the is plunging into chaos, and indeed, it's the civil war that we have. It's like nice how you have to choose that. It's like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, click it. Guys, there, click there's, it. There's one option: take chaos. the pain. <laughs> the clashes escalated into a full-blown civil war. The horrors made you isolate yourself for a while. Monica helped you cope, and love grew, grew between the two of you. However, it was a difficult time for love. The chaos must end. 1929, and here it gets relevant again, the charismatic co colonel Tarquin Sol. He's going to be a very important character. 
orchestrated a sudden coup and brought an end to the chaos. He wrote a new constitution and restored stability. The people saw him as a savior. He formed the United Sortland Party and ran as a presidential candidate. In the first election... I think we voted for him, actually. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. He's, yeah. he's stopping the chaos. He's yes. stopping the civil war. And, and we he's are, trying you know, to unite everything and yeah. bring people back together. And we are certainly for stability. So, United Sortland Party, USP, won the election by a large majority. After graduation, you kept seeing Monica and noticed her interest to marry. However, a letter arrived from the military calling you to fulfill your compulsory service. It was time to serve your national duty. That sucks. So, yes. <laughs> February 1930, Bergia region. A devastating civil war again broke out. No, no. Oh, no, no, no. In yes. the neighboring country, Velen. The distinguished Major Josef Lancea ordered you to lead your squad on a border patrol mission. It was a very cold winter night when you began marching out of Gamerin Outpost. You could see your breath. After several hours of marching through the snowy hills, distant noises were heard. Visit visibility was low to confirm the source. Too low to confirm the source. The squad crawled forward in information and found a spot to observe. A group of refugees had made it beyond the border fence. You? Yeah. I think we are on the humanitarian path here, right? We, we are not... We are sort of inspired by Western ideas. And yes, immigration policy is going to be a touchy subject, but... I don't mind that we let them slip through. What? Do you want to let them slip through? Yeah, yeah I would. We could ask all them back, but that would plunge them back into civil war. And I mean, yeah, yeah, I think the humane thing is to let them sit through in that moment, at least. After the patrol, Major Lancea arrived with anger and immediately relieved you of your command, calling you a disappointment. One of your squad members had reported your actions. Well, yeah, well, obviously we... he was too depressed. <laughs> no. After several months scrubbing of scrubbing balls. the floors as punishment, well, you, you just ended, you went back to civilian life. 1931, you and Monica decided to share your lives together. I, I like how it's how just pink after that gloomy, like, First World War picture. Um, after receiving the blessing of her parents and so on and so on, we are just basically marrying. Um, so, we are starting our career. And it was difficult due to the refugee incident, but we still managed. So are we working for the ruling party as the easiest path to power, financial compensation, or country for the better? I think country for the better, right? We are idealistic here. Yeah, we are not we are not the kind of person that is striving for power exactly. so much and not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> this will probably completely <laughs> corrupt us. <laughs> You became the economics, uh, economics assistant to one of the more experienced members of the assembly. You worked long and hard, staying late, invested blah blah. You were climbing the ladder, going well. Going okay, well, moving so, up in the world. Three years later, Saul strengthened the republic by removing the institutions and symbols of the former kingdom from society. Things were also looking good for the country as the massive economic boom continued and people were the happiest they've been in a decade. Well, it's not been a great decade, <laughs> It's I not think. been a great decade, no. Or like centuries so far. <laughs> yeah, but, but you know, here's, here's the first you sort, of, sort of glimmer of things going a little bit awry, I think. So Seoul is winning for a second time and, and he's changing the, the institutions and it might be yeah, a good thing still. Removing institutions of the former kingdom can be a good thing, but then again, removing institutions might also mean we are on a path of maybe it hangs not in so the balance. I think. Right, the new five-year plan and the subsequent work regarding finances put you under a lot of pressure. But your significant contribution to the economic strategy triggered an invitation to meet President Tarquin Salt himself, who offered you a key position. You were to become the youngest member of Assembly, so basically, that's the Parliament of Sortland here. I think we are still yeah. like pretty much behind it. Yeah, I think so. Are we do? I mean, we we do have doubts. We just said we had doubts. But we do have ideals. I think so. So, um, and we just said, you know, we wanted to change the country for the better. We are being an offered position in in parliament here. So we can actually. We, we might be thinking actually there is a 
possibility for us to influence yes. where we are going. Yeah. So. I think we accept. Yeah. It. Yeah. I mean, there's only accept or accept. It's just without or <laughs> <so> without. <laughs> As the youngest MP, it was difficult to connect with the influential inner circle. You needed allies, so you brought Peter as your right-hand man. The birth of your son, Frank, proved a brief moment of joint relief. You, what is it going to be? Family or, or work? So, actually, both of these are going to be hugely influential. Family will play a role, but so will the party. That I... part played ahead. I haven't, so I would say sacrifice work to spend time with your family. Okay, fair enough. Let's do that. I mean, otherwise Frank is just gonna be like, "Who are you?" <laughs> True. Frank is gonna be annoying, but, but we'll come to that. <laughs> During your absence, Peter found trustworthy contacts and strengthened your position in the party. At the same time, President Saul increased his authority over the years. His growing ego started to cause strife within the party. So, by the way, we are now up to his fourth election win. I think we somehow uh, skipped the third one. So cracks are beginning to show. And I mean, at a fourth election term, that's that's already kind of... He's been in power for 12 years. It's a long time. Yeah. But we do have that. Yes. <laughs> in some countries. And, you know, it's still so, four more. <laughs> four years later again, President Saul barely secured a majority in this election against the opposition leader. Over the past year, people were growing discontent with corruption and the worsening quality of life. Meanwhile, calls for United Scotland Party Congress became louder as the leadership struggle started to brew. We don't know a lot about the opposition, do we? If it's the socialists, no, if it's... The no, I, well, I think there's the internal opposition. So this is still within the United Scotland Party, but... In the United Scotland parties, people are starting to become uh, uh, unrestful because you know it's now 1945, so there's but, a but long what time do you that mean? he's do you around. Think these elections were just not general e elections, but people were choosing. No, no, I, yeah, no, I think these were general elections where people were choosing the sole party, and because of his, his hold on power, he was basically able to win that. But he still needs the backing of his party, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, no, but. Who is the opposition leader? That's, I mean, the oh, first that, sentence. That, no, that, that like, we don't know yet. We don't know that. No, that it was we don't a nationalist know. or whoever is that. No. But yeah, I mean, you're totally right. Uh, within the party, it's not very united. It's the ununited Scotland party. And I'm thinking we could go into the opposition here because we are the young guy, you know. We, we, we look for something better and, and we want things to change. We want the old guard to, to move away a little bit. Make room for us, make maybe a little bit room for the country yeah, as well. But, but are we not sort of, I mean, look at how much time has passed. I mean, obviously not in the game because it goes very quickly, but we joined that whole thing like also 10 years ago or something. So we are not the young guy anymore. I mean, it hasn't really said that, well, but I don't think we are. We are we're we, 30, we, we're 37 at this point. I think that's still, you know, prime age for someone to. Yeah, that's it's a point you where you say. want to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, uh, but, you know, you guess what I you get what I mean. Yeah, yeah I know like what you mean. We've been around for quite a while and I think some of the old people already moved away. Obviously not the president, but some of the others. And I think maybe it's time to say, OK, all these developments are also not quite what we are imagining. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, so we're both um, saying opposition, but just for different reasons. <laughs> but didn't you say we are too young to join the opposition or did I just... No, I, I said we are young and eager and hungry. So we want to join the opposition to get rid of Seoul and, you know, make ah, room. Yeah, yeah, bit. yeah. Okay, no, let's, so let's join the opposition. I mean, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so you, we're giving support to Ed e Ewald Alfonso, a reformist and talented businessman gate, who's the main contender for party leadership. Desperate effort to secure votes, President Saul was meeting party members one by one. But he didn't approach you. Yeah. There you have it. There we have it. Party Congress was nothing short of impressive. The banners of United Southern were decorating every possible spot. Yeah, that sounds not so good. Thousands of influential political figures, lobbyists and benefactors gathered for this turning point. The voting for the party leadership began. Well, now, I mean... No, I mean there's no question. 
or D6. The efforts bore fruit as the contentious leadership vote was won by Ewald Alfonso. During the Congress, Sol announced his retirement from politics. You knew the structure he had established was to stay. The country had become increasingly authoritarian. You? Um, well, I'm, I'm, I'm no. sure we are not troubled <laughs> by his departure. No, but actually, well, the last one is, is rubbish. You didn't care about who was in charge. That's obviously not true. I think we are happy, but we are also a bit troubled because leaving is always a instability. I mean, we are, we are troubled but about the change or the instability. Yeah, we are not tr troubled yeah. about the departure. So we are happy about the departure. Easy, yeah. yeah. Goodbye. Farewell. So. Uh, we've got a, a daughter now. Monica Diana. named her Diana. 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 It's always, it's really, almost didn't all... have a say in it. <laughs> she motivated you during a tumultuous period in the party. The general elections were approaching. The United Scotland Party was under the new leadership of Ewald Alfonso. You? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're well, supporting we, him, right? Still, yeah, yeah, we're pro Alfonso. Go for it. So, well, three years later. Right, so I think Alfonso is only. Elected as USP uh, chairman here. Chairman, yes, I'm confused. Right, yeah. Because Saul resigned. And now it's general election. So he was party leader, but Saul was still the president. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, so now we've got the next general elections, obviously four years after 45. The main opposition leader was embroiled in a sex scandal with the secretary. That's not good timing. I think, yeah. Diminishing their chances. The extensive privatization program proposed by Alfonso secured an election victory. Over the next years, you did your best in order to make Solon a better place. Well, that's very generic. Tried all that was necessary to climb the ladder, career. Dedicated yourself to the party. I think no, we're no, not. No, no, no. I it's, think it's we're one, yes. Solon. We are, we are yeah. idealistic here. Yeah. At Alfonso saw many bold reforms, but was followed by a serious economic downturn. Other parties announced their bids for the 1953 election, but the unfair system hampered all opposition efforts to win. You? Thought that your party could not survive another crisis. Were worried about the economic recession? Worried that your reputation could be tarnished? No, I think we are worried about the recession, mostly. Yeah, I it, mean, we are by education also. The we economist. are by education and it's consistent with what we've been doing, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. let's do it. Yeah. So just two more to go and then we'll actually come so into the Petra, game. So Petra, our old friend. Yes. So together our presence in the USP grew and you became the face of the new wing in the party. You effectively took over the leadership as President Alfonso lost control of the country. The moment to make a move had come. You blamed Alfonso for the price of television. <laughs> Bold move. Bribed and extorted Alfonso's inner circle. Advice Alfonso to step down. So I'm not going to go wow. for the bribe here. The other two I... I no, no. <laughs> Come on. We are idealistic. We want, want things to change. Yeah, for but, the but, yeah but it's also not the, the nice move to blame someone on television. I mean, that's... So pretty... we just privately advise him to, him to step down. We're just yeah, we telling him... but we don't think that is going to work, do we? The, thing, the question is, do we actually want to make him step down, or do we want to? No, I think, I, I, I think we'll we'll let's let's advise him to step down. I think oh. it will work. I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't you see. Yes. <laughs> you, you didn't take your advice seriously and start to reshuffle his cabinet, but most of his inner circle abandoned him. Uh -huh. That's good. See? That's good. Your diplomatic attitude made the party vote you as, in as the new leader. That's also good. Following this, you announced that you would be running for president in the general election with Petra as your running mate. It was your turn. Right, game so is on. Game is, game is almost <laughs> on. After visiting every city and town during the campaign, you made a speech on state television. You promised to enact democratic reforms, right? Yeah, into Western, yeah. Western democracy, it is. And here we go. That's the prologue, and it's uh, it's been a while. So the people are tired of empty promises. We need fundamental change in our institutions and governments. A solid and transparent democracy awaits us, brothers and sisters. A new constitution and a new age is upon us. And now the if, broadcast if, ended. If, if that isn't a good speech, then I'll end. So here we go. Election time. Let's face the truth. And I do hope that we're going to be elected in. Otherwise, there's going to be a very short, uh, very short <laughs> episode. <laughs> 
Right, President One, President uh, Chapter One, President Rain. I think that's us. Yes. Yeah. Loading, loading, loading. We will come to a character creation screen. I think there we go. Oh no, the mustache needs to go. Yeah, I know that you would no, say that. No, 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 no. We we're gonna. I I think we're gonna go and clean shaven here. You know, just sort of. Oh, there we go. Sort of Western reformist, maybe. Yeah, well, that's very mediocre, but background? Why would we need a background? Does it walk around with us? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's, no, it's... no, no, maroon suit? Really? Okay, let's do the default suit. No, that's ugly. No. 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 Okay, that's okay. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, for the 1950s, it's it's to to me that's that's a 1950s guy. Are we the fourth president? Um, so yeah, that was the that was the no that before was... Seoul there was ah, the was Republic, one. but we don't know who was president then. Okay, okay, because we don't... met the son, but I don't remember the name. Okay, never he was mind. giving us. But... Okay, but we are the fourth apparently, right? We will not be changed. Yes. Okay, fine. There we go. So here's the first decision that we really need to do. Um, and that is election promises. So what are we going to promote here in terms of economics, diplomacy and immigration? I don't know why that was on, on the previous screen, but we promised democracy. I think we're going to go with the Western values here. So free market, Western and... Diplomacy. Yeah, I think left, left, left is what yeah. we're going to do. Sure. Sounds good to me. So Term focus. We've also promised to focus on a certain extensive subject within our first term. Health, education, law and enforcement or military. So what is, I, I don't actually know what our main problems are. So if health is a major issue or not. I mean, it does say since the 1940s, we are now in 53, aren't we? So I've, I've, I've just played a little bit ahead and I will spoil that to the degree that I say all of these are a major problem. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> everything. Everything is seriously bad. Um, so the entire country is in shambles. Um, I mean, and our neighboring countries are sort of still fighting, or are they not? No, they know well, that? no. We, I, I just know it a little bit. They are not. There is one. There is one aggressive country um, that's going to be close to us, and they are making sort of aggressive noises uh, towards us. So. Our military is, mm. is pretty bad, and they are maybe coming for us. So. That could be a valid uh, choice. I'm also thinking law and enforcement because, you know, if there's fighting on the streets, if we are descending into another civil war, that would probably be bad for the education and healthcare system as well. Yeah. So yeah, if, the, if, the, if the people are dead because there's no healthcare, then okay. the, the other stuff also doesn't really matter. So yeah, let's not do health. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, uh, normally, yes. if well, it, it was mean, a it's... normal country, I would go education. I would yeah. think, yeah, it's a good long-term growth path. But we do have a lot of short-term issues here. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. I mean, obviously, it's not an easy decision because all of these are important. I mean, not... yes. So, so I'm leaning towards the hard elements: law enforcement and/or military. Yeah, I, I, I can see where you're coming from because this country is got like major issues that you're not gonna solve with a better education system which is only gonna influence people over the long term over, over long term which, at which point we might not be here yeah yeah which one of you I mean, is, is there a risk of like a military putch or something oh yes they absolutely become too strong or if they oh if they oh, become if, too strong if, if they if become too weak if, if they are just them. yeah it's it's going to be extremely tight lines to walk between all of the institutions in this country yeah let's go with law and enforcement i mean we have to choose good choice i think more. yeah we're going to confirm that two weeks have passed since we won the election and now i was about to be sworn in as the president of Scotland. thousands were watching and cheering my name anton rain the day was cast then i saw it again in the distance of my maroon palace. You see, we should have worn a maroon suit so <laughs> to go with the palace. So on top of the famous Hill of Pride, I had no way of knowing what future awaited me there. I looked at my family, my son and daughter, Frank and Dina, Diana. Uh, we're next to Monica, my wife. 
gentle reminder there. <laughs> Casey eyes... forgot about her. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's been a long intro. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is just going to be a little bit of the speech, so I think we're going to just gently click through okay, that. Okay, so we've got the also Hawker, the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court. Yeah, that's yeah. very justice-y. He, he, he'll be... The time for those has, has come. come. He's, he's going to be around. He's going to be relevant. He, everyone's going to be relevant. He's going to be a very nice guy. Not so much. So, I don't think this makes any Let's changes. Start. <laughs> Let's start. Let's <laughs> start. Please repeat after me, I do solemnly swear yeah. that I will respectfully execute the office of the president of Sodom. Yeah, why is that important now that we do that? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Blah, 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 blah. Republic of Scotland. Nice that it does have a link to our country. It is, a, it is an honor. <laughs> it is. An I honor. think it's time yeah, to say true. something like that. Um, dear fellow swords, no, I don't think we want to play the nationalist card. Brothers and no, sisters, dear, dear citizens. citizens. Yeah, that's very formal. It's <laughs> he's he's not a people's guy. I think crowd look. Yeah, very but brothers even. and sisters, sisters is very socialist, isn't it? Yeah, it might be. Might be. Um, change and hope. Or our situation. No, no, no! Don't go for it. this. Is your inauguration speech? You, you're not going to start up. saying, "Oh, things look pretty bleak." <laughs> so, oh, oh, well. <laughs> we, we'll we'll people have a look know, at it. People know that things are bleak, and you're yes, not going to say, true. "Hi, guys, things <laughs> are pretty shitty." So, <laughs> and, and they might become worse for a long time here, but we'll see. We'll bring prosperity and reform to our nation. I mean, your job as a president is also to bring hope to people. So we're going to say our capabilities here. Yeah, I didn't read that, but sounds good. Yeah, the other ones were a little bit less. Um, stop the, uh, the recession and eliminate poverty, or turn our faces to the West, or rewrite our constitution. Now, mm -hmm. I think we are worried about the recession, right? So, to me, that seems like the most important thing. I do want to go yeah. for the West. We might want to re reform our constitution, but I think, you know, let's yeah, try yeah, to eliminate yeah. poverty here. <laughs> Uh, I have no opinion on that one. Mm, don't no, not Change. the first one. I think the first one no, sounds very the, much like yeah, the that's old a little times. bit nationalistic. Go for change now. Change now sounds good. Yeah, everyone is cheering. Uh, raise fist. Yeah, no. Um, we can wave. Yes, waving is is sort of innocent and nice, as we are for now. Right. Presidential so we're car. And search is coming up. Who's search? Waltner. He's our driver. Oh, hi guys. I'm, I'm glad we don't have the same facial hair. <laughs> yes, he's our new driver. I'm just going to say yes. I'm going to click through that a little bit because this is our driver and there are more important uh, decisions to, to make. He's still a nice guy. He's lovely to have around, but... Um, but ac actually, the game says we are not really listening to him. He's like, keep rambling on. <laughs> see, and see, I didn't even listen to the game there. <laughs> I found myself lost in thought. And sunlight glittered off the Paris palace's many maroon-colored domes. My duty to the nation. Uh, so do I, Spotter. It's I, the beating heart of the nation. That sounds chaotic. No, no, no. I don't want to go for for um, praising Saul. No. Just a building. So do I. So do I. Just a building, Sash. Get your group together, man. Well said. <laughs> Can't drive past. Have a great day. Sort of phrase. Ah, so there's the phrase. Armogna Vescor. Famous phrase from the revolution. Armogna Vescor Vectern Sizda. Which meant morning will come, victory is close. We can, we can. Victory is close. I, it sounds a bit pa pathetic. I mean, just very. So there's a lot of pathos in there, right? Yeah, a lot, a lot, but I. See, see. We, we are a little bit. Right, and here we are, finally in the <laughs> game. It only took us 34 minutes to do that. But, so, I would just briefly show you around. This is our country. It does have various uh, different provinces. Here's Holzorn, our capital. And um, there's Lachavin, where we went to school. Uh, the neighboring countries, Velen, Laspia, and Rumburg. Rumburg? I don't know how to pronounce these. Agnolia. Agnolia. Um, yeah, and there's going to be a lot of things to talk about. 
and there's going to be a lot of issues in our country. Everything that's red here is is bad, as you would expect. So, as I said, pretty much everything is broken. But there are some green things. There are some green things, yes. Just on average, things aren't exactly right. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a fun game about making hard decisions, uh, about walking the tight line, because the other thing that I just want to briefly show you here is the political overview. So we've got various ministers. Don't think, don't know whether they're that uh, significant yet, but we'll be sort of walking a tight line here between the old guard, so the people that President Seoul has brought into power, the oligarchs, the um, capitalists who have made themselves rich um, in the meantime, and they have quite, they are quite powerful. And then we've got the reformists, the people um, who do want to bring change, and probably we want to work with them, but probably we don't want to get um, killed by these guys. Um, there's the well, assembly. Maybe we do. <laughs> we will probably, but uh, we don't want to. So there's the parliament, uh, and then we've got the Supreme Court, uh, which again is sort of. Um, sort of torn here and uh, all of these things will be quite hard to uh, to balance against each other but that being said i think now is a good place to put in a cut yes yes a so lot, a lot of work to do it seems a lot of work to do so let us know your thoughts down in the comments and uh, do leave a like if you want and we do hope to see you around for the next episode thanks guys bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye.